the thing I just find most special is the fly out. Every night of the year, about 15 minutes after sunset, the bats will lift. It's an absolute spectacle to see these thousands of bats just lift up and fill the night sky. My name's Stephen Brand. I'm the grey-headed flying fox um, project officer for Parks Victoria. My job is to look after this fantastic flying fox colony here in Yarra Bend Park. We're only five kilometres from the CBD, the centre of Melbourne, and yet it really feels like we're in the bush. And that's one of the special things about this park. It's just this oasis of green right in the heart of the city. And of course, it's filled with these amazing creatures. We call them flying foxes, but they're bats. Bats are the only mammals that are capable of sustained flight. And people see them and they say, are they birds? No, they're mammals, they're like us. They breastfeed, they're young. And the other funny thing, even though we call them fruit bats, what they're really after is pollen and nectar. We like to think of them as big nocturnal bees. Whilst they're looking for food, they're in fact pollinating and fertilizing plants and spreading seeds. And whilst bees may spread seeds over 500 meters, these guys will be doing it over 30 or 40 kilometers. One of the interesting things about the flying foxes is there's only one population in the whole of Australia. The bats here are only here now, and throughout the year, they'll move up and down the east coast of Australia. And people say, well, how can they be a threatened species? There's thousands of them. But if you tell me that there's thousands in Yarra Bend, what you're also saying is there's only hundreds left in Queensland. We've lost 95% of the population of, of grey-headed flying foxes since European settlement. And when you have habitat destruction and the bushfires that we've seen over the course of the last summer and even before that, it's hardly surprising that these wonderful animals that depend on the forest are having a hard time. But there's a bigger threat, and that's climate change. 80% of all births happen in October when there's all the food resources and the mothers are having to feed the baby, they've got lots of food. But it does make the young very, very susceptible to heat. And the heat waves are getting longer and more frequent, and that's the problem. Indeed, we think the whole of the 2019 generation was essentially lost. No species can sustain frequent loss of so many youngsters and no recruitment into the adult population. There's an evolving science about how you manage bats on the, on the heat stress, but essentially they have to be cooled and wet. They need water to drink and the water also helps keep them cool. So we've installed sprinkler systems, which is really quite innovative. And then we have a veterinary team that will take in the orphans and try and, and rehydrate them. And we have a revegetation program to keep the habitat regenerating so that they've got a future for the long term. One of the other great volunteer projects is the Citizen Science Project. Every month we count the bats. This is one of the longest, if not the longest, bat monitoring project in, in Australia, so it's absolutely fantastic. We practice conservation, but it's a science. We have to do things that are in keeping with nature and that make sense. And how do you know that they make sense? You've got to be able to prove it. I talk about heat stress events and the impact of global warming. We have microclimate monitoring stations and they will prove or disprove the effectiveness of the sprinklers. They're such an undervalued species, but we need them. The forests need them. Come down and see them talk to the rangers, talk to the volunteers. We welcome visitors and, and picnickers and kayakers, but particularly students. We love students to learn more about them. You can sign up for one of the volunteer groups or join the back count. And then there's other things you can do at home. If you have a backyard fruit tree, use wildlife safe netting. And of course, for so many creatures, as well as the bats, plant out native vegetation. Come down and see the colony for yourself. I mean, honestly, anything that hangs upside down is so kooky, it's got to be cool. <laughs>